Hello and welcome to Thrift Miss, where I'm going to 24 different thrift stores, no repeats, and I am trying to pull the maximum amount of value out of each thrift store. The thrift store for this video is going to be the DAV, or the DAV Thrift, however you want to say it, in Gloucester, Virginia. Gloucester is the town I grew up in. I have been to this place a couple of times. It's never given me a lot, but maybe today will be different, so let's go find out. I thought this was very clever, putting a Santa outfit on an MMA statue. Also, these are the worst fake converse I've ever seen in my life. They just look so bad. And if you want some romance novels, um, this place has you. I, I was making a joke because there's so many romance novels, but then I looked at the other shelves and found so many books. So many books. <laughs> Oh, it's not even done yet. Um, this is a pair of vintage Lucky Brand jeans with a button fly, but they're white. And you know the problem with white pants is that they definitely had some stains. This was the first one I found, and then I found some other ones in some not cute places, so those stayed behind. However, I did find these. These are giving very much Y2K era with the flared legs and the embroidery and all the sparkles and low rise. So these went into my cart. Uh, I also checked comps too, just so you guys understand that. And I'm trying to show you just how sad the men's section is here. Like these are six foot sections and it has maybe three inches full of stuff. I thought this couch was just awesome. It was just a cool couch. I did, however, find some Travis Matthew in the sad men section. So that was a W for me for five bucks. This is Driftwood. Driftwood is, by my understanding, a Free People sub brand. So I picked this up because again, it's got the embroidery. Probably won't sell until it warms up, but I thought it was cool. This I've talked about on my channel before, Pashmina. This was absolutely gorgeous, but that's what I could sell it for on eBay. So that stayed behind. Really cool though. And, and here I found an awesome example of how to tell the difference between fake Lacoste and real Lacoste. So this is real Lacoste because you can see this is white all the way around with teeth and it has an embroidery patch. Whereas this is just straight embroidered on the garment. Real Lacoste is always going to be a patch and you're not gonna be able to see the backside, which I'm showing you there. So I found one real Lacoste piece and one fake Lacoste piece. I picked up the real one. And here's my cart at the end, very, very full. And I'm on my way to check out. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, that was an absolutely massive and amazing surprise. I did not expect to find that much stuff so close to where I grew up. Again, that store had never really yielded this much before. So much, in fact, that I'm going to go over all the clothes that were picked up from this haul, and then I'm going to have to hand you off to other Bob to do the books, because that's how much stuff I got. So we're going to start off with clothing, and I'm going to start with the stuff that's hung up, because if you had told me, I would have found 100% silk piece from Vince. <laughs> In Gloucester, I would have told you absolutely not. But here it is. Uh, this is an extra small, but it's an oversized extra small. This would actually fit me. And it is 100% silk. It's absolutely beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. Amazing. The next thing I'm going to share with you is the sweater I'm wearing. This is an acrylic sweater, but it's super, super soft, very fuzzy, and it's got the big American flag. This is from the early 90s. It is PBX Basics, I think is what it is. And it's super soft. It's a size large. It fits me great. Like the sleeves are long enough. It's so comfortable. Uh, I'm not keeping it. I'm just showing it for the video. I figured I'd wear this for the video because it's my size and it's so cute. But yeah, it's made in the USA. Very cool piece. And it's perfect. <laughs> And speaking of vintage, I also saw this and immediately grabbed it because it's so eye-catching. 
This is also from the 90s. It's a white piece. It did have a stain on it, which I got out using my hydrogen peroxide and bleach trick, which I have talked about on this channel before. And now it's absolutely stunning. Um, this is Christy and Jill. Again, brand doesn't necessarily matter. It's a size medium. It's just a bright polka dot, like rainbow piece. And I was like, somebody's gonna want this. So it's up on eBay now. Um, chances are after 30 days, I'll put it up on Depop and it'll go. But I thought this was great. This is 100% polyester, so definitely I'm not keeping it, but it is really cool. And I felt like somebody else needed that in their life. Train thinks so too. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you some pants because apparently I did not put this in a great order. So I have bought and sold vintage Bill Blast pieces multiple times these are a petite and whenever something is vintage uh, especially once it gets into like the 90s i actually do things normally i list it normally by the measurements of the waist because these are from the 80s and a size 10 petite from the 80s is a 26 inch waist so that would not be a modern size 10 at all a modern size 10 is a roughly a size 30 inch waist that's a big difference four inches is a lot that's what she said. Uh, and these are actually true petites. They have a, I believe a 26 inch inseam. So these are a true mom style, rigid denim, petite pair of pants. So I put this up by the measurements and hopefully someone will snap this up. Uh, I definitely always include measurements when it comes to pants because I need those measurements due to my little tiny waist and the round thing that is currently not in your face. Um, but also I have a 32 inch inseam, so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is a pair of can-cans. I have been finding a lot of can-can lately and still haven't sold any of it. So I know that there are several people that have great success with can-can. I know Alicia at Married Life and Hustle at Home Mom are able to, to sell it pretty well. Even Courtney from Common Tags. I've been picking it up. It's not moving for me. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's a pair of cutoff shorts. No big deal. Who knows? Maybe maybe this will be the piece that sells. But it's a pair of Can Can shorts. They're size 30. They have like a pretty decent inseam. It's not like a short inseam, but it has the raw age and it's supposed to be like that. Now this is a pair of Not Your Daughter's Jeans with the tummy tuck in it, which means they have this really nice elastic panel. Magically, no puckering in these. These are supposed to be a 10 petite, but their inseam is too long. So I just put it as a size 10 and I'll put like size 10 and then the inseam measurement because for me, I feel like it doesn't count as a petite size unless the inseam is shorter than 27 inches. Anything longer than that, I think it's just regular. And then once you get to 32 or higher, then it's tall. That's my personal opinion on that. But you know what? There is no standardized sizing. So I guess they could do whatever they want. And I actually own a pair of Not Your Daughter jeans myself in uh, charcoal gray, and I love them. One of the few pairs of pants that I found that fit me. This is the Y2K pants that I showed you guys, hello, in the video. It's got some really great embroidery as well as some sequins there. These are kind of a low rise. They have like a nine inch in a nine inch rise. You did not know rises from like the crotch up to the top of the button. That's what the rise is. So it's it's kind of like going to eBay. It's mid rise. I would still count this as a low rise, but I also have a long torso. I have a long torso and long legs. It's, it's a great life to have. <laughs> but these are boot cut, so hopefully someone will want these. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But I picked them up because I did check comps and the comps were decent and also the style is in right now. So uh, this was amusing to me. Um, I actually had to pick these up because of the fact these are a pair of White Stag. So White Stag is a in-house Walmart brand and you're like, Bob, why on earth would you buy Walmart pants? Well, because these are vintage. These are made in Hong Kong, which means they're probably either made in the late 80s, early 90s. They're a plaid, giving me very much Annie Hall vibes here. This is like a carrot style, I think it's what it's called. Um, and again, these are a size 12 petite. 
uh, but I'm just going to list it by the waist size and the inseam because that is the best way to do that in my opinion. But I just, these are purple. Again, I've talked about people that love purple, like really love purple. And these are just a cool pair of vintage pants. I'm not gonna list them for a lot, but they also didn't cost a lot. So that's pretty great as far as I'm concerned. Now, I rarely pick up sleepwear, but this is a Laura Ashley piece. And Laura Ashley is a great brand. They're vintage pieces. They're cottage core vintage pieces like from the 80s and 90s those do the best um, for me and for most people on the internet but i found a little sleep set uh, it's super soft this is a size medium very cute little floral sleep set again something that i'm not expecting a whole lot of, of money for but again another piece that i didn't spend a whole lot on so that's why i picked that up it was just super cute and it has good brand and brand is king on ebay so i'm hoping someone will pick that up uh, i also picked this up i considered keeping it but i'm not going to because it's white and i don't trust myself i do need a robe but this is show me your moo moo and it is a one size and it's just gorgeous floral beautiful white pink roses absolutely lovely it does it's nice and long the sleeves are soft like it's a beautiful robe i just especially i would wear this at the boys house um and with the dogs uh this would get torn up too fast so i need like a, a good robe this is it's not a saying this is not a good robe but i need like a thick flannel robe is what i'm thinking of i don't know i'll come across one i'm sure at some point since i keep finding sleepwear but i picked this up because show me your moo moo We'll see what happens. Uh, I did find free people at uh, this thrift store, which again, surprised. Uh, this is Intimately Free People and it is an extra small bodysuit with that in the back. So uh, I really wish I could wear bodysuits, but again, tall lady, long torso, long legs. They're not gonna fit me. I'm not going to be comfortable in this, but they always look so cute. And then you don't have to worry about tucking in your shirt one day maybe but it's a turtleneck very cool piece um hopefully someone will want that again not something i'm going to ask a whole lot for but cute basic uh here's a vintage piece this is a men's medium polo from the uh probably either late 70s early 80s based on the spear point collar it's got a pocket uh, and i know it's men because of the sizing it says men's medium 38 to 40 which is indicative of it being a men's shirt because women's clothing do doesn't do chest measurements like that that's what that is it's supposed to be the chest measurement here um but yeah i found this vintage piece i will hopefully sell it if it doesn't sell within 30 days i can pull it to do a project with which i got a wonderful christmas gift from my mom from my parents mostly my mom um and I, it's going to take me a while to figure out how to use it. But once I do, I will announce that. But it's very exciting for me. I'm very lucky. My family is very good to me. I found another 70s piece. This thing is amazing. So this is, again, the brand doesn't matter because it's vintage. This is Sweet Tree. This is a really long line cardigan, again, from the late 70s, early 80s with wooden buttons. Nope, they're plastic. I'm sorry, I lied. They just look like wood. But this is like true late 70s, early 80s. This thing was horribly pilled, but the sweater, shave, the sweater shaver saved it. That's a that's worse than Sally sells. She's she, 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 apparently not. I can't say that either. But yeah, I picked this up because it's a beautiful vintage piece, and you all know how much I love buying and selling vintage which is why I also picked up this. I, do, I don't imagine once I li list this, it's going to stay around very long. It is clicking off all of the boxes. Beautiful gray floral. This is a size small and it's like more of a boxy fits kind of small because it does fit me, which is what I love about these vintage pieces that is that they had a lot more room in the arms <laughs> until you get to about like the, the 60s and then it's less room in the arms. But this clicks off granny core, this clicks off cottage core with the floral pattern. It does granny core with the little lace collar. 
This thing is so cute. The brand is Kathy Daniels. And I just thought, this is just adorable. It's something that I kind of want to put into my own closet. Because I feel like I would look cute in this. But I'm going to let it go into a new home. Because I don't need any more sweaters. I also found Madewell. This is a size medium. This is a wrap leopard print top. A little tie waist down here at the bottom. It does have a modesty snap if you do not want to show as much decolletage as uh, other people necessarily would. But it's just a cute little Madewell piece. I don't ever mark up Madewell that high and because I don't mark it up it normally moves pretty quickly for me. This is a men's piece. This says it's a size large. I'm gonna have to change my listing because I think I put this as an XL based on the measurements so I'm gonna have to change that. But this is from the late 80s, early 90s. This is made in the USA. This is Black Diamond by Sugarbush. And it's just a Polar Tech fleece piece. It's bright red. It is a quarter zip or half zip. I guess it's half zip. But this is another nice, really nice vintage piece. It's a perfect time of year for that. Again, it didn't cost me very much. I didn't find too much men's at this uh, thrift store due to the fact that there was not that much men's to find at this thrift store. Absolutely amazing women's disco shirt. So it's a beautiful dark floral with this long spear point. So you see how long this is? This is what I was trying to talk about before. This is a spear point collar. It's got that long point. I actually ended up spending way too long looking at like the different collar types. Um, the other one, the lace collar piece, that's a Peter Pan lace collar spent way too much time looking up keywords and stuff. But gorgeous dark floral. This is 100% polyester. This, I believe, is actually handmade. There is absolutely no label in it anywhere or any remnants of it. I believe this is 100% handmade. Uh, and it measures about a large, extra large. But it has these beautiful balloon sleeves, cute little buttons at the bottom. I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. I could not leave this behind. I really hope someone buys this and snaps it up. This is a spread spear point collar. You don't need to know that, but that's what this is. Gorgeous dark floral. Absolutely hope someone snaps that up. This is a Joua piece. I, again, have never found Joua before. I know it from Courtney and Comet Tags, and then I have found my second piece due to this thrift miss here. This is a mix of a couple of decent materials, which is why I picked it up. It's modal Pima cotton and spandex, but it's a ribbed cotton piece. This is a size large. It's supposed to, it has a lot of stretch to it. This is supposed to be very bodycon uh, and have a lot of give to it. So like the sleeves look very short, but these are supposed to are stretch out um, because again, this is supposed to be like a bodycon piece. Really nice basic color, like a brownish tan color. But I put that up and I was actually really surprised by the comps on that. I've talked to you guys how much I love blue and gray. So I picked up a linen blue and gray piece. This is a cropped piece. It is pink and brown. I always think pink and brown look so good together. And I know that this would probably look cute on me. But I'm, one, not at the point in my life physically where I want to wear something cropped. Unless I'm wearing something very high-waisted. <laughs> But it's very cute. I feel like this is going to be a great springtime piece. I know that's not really the time of year for it, but hopefully someone will pick this up when it warms up and this is a size small. And then I found Spanx for the first time, thanks to Thriftness. And look, again, just like with the Joua, I found a second piece. So this is a, kind of like a smoothing tank top and this is a 2XL, which is amazing. Uh, and I am so excited to find Spanx for the second time. I was just like, what? Why is this going so well for me? The thrifting has just been amazing this month. But here is my second Space Pink Spanx piece in 2XL. Great size. Another Madewell top. This one is in gorgeous mustard yellow. Again, I love this color. It just does not look good on me. Absolutely beautiful color though. This is made out of 50% organic and 50% regular cotton, which doesn't make any sense to me. 
But these Madewell Basic Tees, you know, I don't pay a whole lot for them. And because I don't pay a lot for them, I price them very reasonably and they go out the door. So hopefully that'll happen with that one. It's just a really good basic and I'm not marking it up. So hopefully someone will find that a great home. And then I picked up this Columbia PFG skirt. This is a size eight. It does have pockets. It has a nice little side attachment there. It does have the little shorts. So it's a skirt. it's a PFG skirt. Just a great basic piece. Columbia does normally really well for me. The PFG does really well for me. The men's does sell faster, but the women's does sell eventually and has a little side pocket over here too. So I thought this was cute. It's not really a skirt fishing season right now, but again, I source and list all year round. It doesn't really matter. I don't hold things to list when it's that time because I will forget and my death pile is bad enough as it is. This you saw in the video, this is Driftwood, which I found out is part of Free People, it seems like anyway, at least based on what other people's keywords are. It has this beautiful embroidery on the side. I looked up comps and this seemed awesome. And this is a, this, the style is Steph and this is a size 30. So great size, great style, very cute skirt, very boho. I've talked too much how much I love selling vintage knit tops. This is another one. This is Jean Pierre in a size small, very 90s. Feel like wearing a pair, like a cargo skirt. If you got like one of those super long maxi cargo skirts and like some stacked sneakers, pinnacle 90s vibe. So I picked this up um, just for that and it's, it's very cute. It's definitely something that would, that gives me very 90s, so pick that up. You guys saw, hopefully I explained the Lacoste thing in the video pretty well, but I found a fake Lacoste and a real Lacoste in the same size. Once you put them next to each other, it's super easy to tell which one's the real one and which one's the fake one if you know that information. They actually like had different measurements and everything. They're both a size 40, but the real one was like a real size 40 in Lacoste. The other one was like too small. It was a, it was a bad fake, but the cost has, this is an actual patch. It should not be embroidered onto the garment at all. It should always be a patch. It always should have teeth and should have a white background. And then when you turn it over, you should not be able to see anything but the outline of the stitching of the patch, which is what it is here. So this is great women's pink. Lacoste polo in a size 40, which my listing will have whatever size that actually is up there. They, they're European brand, so they have the European sizing. I also found a technically vintage Harley Davidson t-shirt. And I say technically because this is from 2002. This is it right down there. And I guess if your name is Jim and you are a size medium and you live in Florida, you might like this. <laughs> but I picked this up because it's technically a vintage Harley shirt. You know, if it if it sits on eBay for a while, I'll probably just sell this on whatnot. But eBay gets first pick. And we'll see if anybody wants that. And then the last piece I have to physically show you is this Travis Matthew polo. I would have never have guessed I would have found a silk vent shirt a joie piece and then Travis Matthew at this <laughs> at this dab but you know what here we are uh, this is a size 2XL a nice big gray Travis Matthew polo it doesn't have any extra embroidery on it so it's just a nice a nice golf polo and I was very excited to find that now in addition to this clothing I also found this athletic piece but it had already sold and I had to ship it out before I could film this haul so um, this was an XL this is a perfect time of year to be buying and listing your activewear if you have any in your death pile because every it's almost the beginning of 2023 and everybody's got them to use resolutions that they're trying uh, to to kick off I guess but this sold as soon as I listed it and I had to get it out the door um, so yeah, I sold this already. Awesome. So now I'm gonna give you to other Bob and she is gonna go over 
the giant stack of books that I have uh, picked up in this haul as well. So it's a long video. So if you need a snack, now's the time to get one. Thanks, Bob. So I'm going to show you all the books that were picked up at the DAV and it was a lot. Like the whole bottom of the cart was just full. The first ones I'm going to share with you are ones that I'm are technically being kept but not by me. Uh, the boy has stated that he is going to keep these books. So I found Terry Goodkins. Uh, this is from I don't know the Sword of Truth series uh, by Terry Goodkin. I found first edition hardcovers of book three, four, five, and six. So uh, he has decided that these are his. And so because of that, I had to list uh, four other books from my death pile to make up for them. But these are going in his uh, library and I'm happy that <laughs> I'm able to do that for him. I've had really, really awesome luck finding books lately, and it's nice to be able to spread the love a little bit. The next books I'm going to share with you are all books that I actually listed myself on eBay because they were worth listing on eBay. I also had another book, but I sent that to my friend Matt because he loves books as much as I do. He also has a book channel just like I have a book channel, and so I sent that to him. If he shares that with the world, cool. If not, I'm not spoiling it here in case he watches this video. But these are the ones that I listed on eBay. So I found a glut of Roger Zelazny. I've never, I've not read any Roger Zelazny yet. Um, this is actually the first time finding Zelazny, uh, so I could read it. Um, I, this is actually one of the rare books of his. This is Wheel of Fortune. I was shocked when I was looking up comps for this book. Um, the one I also sent Matt was uh, his last book that he published, which kind of gives it away. But it was also a really valuable book, which was surprising to me. But this is brand new. It has never had the spine cracked. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this. I was just like, not only was I able to find a bunch of brand new vintage science fiction and fantasy books, but just I'm in a mass of them. So there's this one. I also found a brand new copy of Orson Scott Card's Ender's World. Now this is not Ender's Game. It is a collaboration between Orson Scott Card and some other writers uh, trying to expand on Ender's world. So it's kind of like a, co a collection of short stories and interviews and that kind of stuff. But this is also brand new. Um, so I put this up on eBay as well another brand new book that I found that I was surprised by. This is Tad Williams Shadow March. This is a trade paper. This is a trade paper. This is mass market. So this is a mass market paperback and it's small. All right. These two are different sizes, but these are both trade paperbacks. Unless you sell books, do you really need to know that? No. But, you know, more is more information, right? So I picked up this one as well because it's a nice fantasy series. Tad Williams I'm familiar with. Haven't read anything from him, but he is an author that I'm familiar with. And brand new book. So that's fantastic. And then all of the other books are all not new. But they're in really good shape and they're all first editions. So this is a rare book to find. And again, shocked to look at the comps for this book. This is Clive Barker's Weave World. I thought reading the back that this was like a fantasy book, but it's supposed to be like a horror fantasy. Very tempted to read this. So I might leave this out of my inventory system and like leave it out. So in case this doesn't sell right away that I have it to read, but my TBR that's to be read if you're not on book two is so long I probably won't get to this before it sells but super excited to see this and actually be able to pick it up um, this is a true first edition because it has the price up here and then if you go inside of it it has the one so there is the one there so this is a true first edition so that's awesome 
I then found a second first edition copy of Ken Follett's The Pillars of Earth, which is hilarious because not only have I found three pieces of George Briard, but now I have found two first edition copies of The Pillars of Earth. So what I ended up doing is I took the dust jacket from the one I found at the ReStore and put it on this book because this one had a better, like the dust jacket was in perfect condition. So I made my copy that I'm keeping is now glorious. And the reason why I put the damaged dust jacket on this copy is because whoever got this book in 1989 decided to write a review in it and date it with their name. So yeah, <laughs> I thought that was funny. But because this is a first edition, even with the dust jacket, and due to the fact that this is a very popular book, so much so it even has a video game attached to it, which I think is for sale on Steam for like $20 now, for those of you interested. Yeah, I thought this was funny. So now my copy, my first edition copy is in great shape, and this one is in acceptable condition. I mean, the spine's in amazing shape, it's just the dust jacket's torn and somebody wrote a book review in it. So <laughs> I'm selling this one. And then this is also another rare hardcover to find. This is The Prince of Tides by Pat Conroy. This is another true first edition. Um, again, it's got the price here and then it also has the first edition. So it has, it doesn't say first edition, it just says one right there. So this is another first edition. This is from 1986. And if you're like, how do you know so much about books? I just looked them up. <laughs> Honestly, if you're around books enough, you can just look at the shelves and tell when something is like a first edition or rare. You just kind of like have a vibe. And that's basically what this was. Like I've never heard of Weave World before. I'd never heard of this book before because like this is not the kind of fiction that I read. I read mostly YA, science fiction, and fantasy. So I just kind of, just kind of pick it up after a while. But that's kind of like with all reselling. Any of you guys who sell in a particular niche over a prolonged period of time or have a special interest, like you just kind of absorb information like a sponge. So those are things that I have listed on eBay. The rest of the books I'm actually selling in an auction on whatnot. So I, uh, I, in a link down below, and hopefully I'll remember to do a pinned comment. So my first auction on whatnot is going to be a book auction and it's going to be predominantly vintage sci-fi and fantasy. A lot of it you're going to see here, but I've also just been gathering stuff up in order to do a book whatnot auction. Uh, it's going to be at 6 p.m. January 2nd. And if you are new to whatnot and you've never been on whatnot before, I actually have a link, again, I hopefully will remember to pin it in a comment in addition to it being in my description, um, where you can get $15 off your first order. The way the $15 credit works is that if, you know, you buy one of my books from me for $5, that means you'll still have $10 of credit, but you are gonna have to pay the shipping. But Whatnot does have media mail shipping, so it makes it a little bit less. So if you're interested, that link will be down below. You guys can uh, save it um and then it, you'll get notified when i go live but it's 6 p.m january 2nd uh eastern time because i live in virginia so i mentioned i found a bunch of zelazny this is brand new never been worn never been worn there now it's been worn oh no <laughs> this is Forever After, I thought about keeping this, but it is just gonna go into a new home. This is a fantasy novel. It is a Bane book, um, but this is brand new. It just, I would get about the same if I auctioned this on Whatnot, if I were to put it on eBay. So that's why it's just gonna go up on Whatnot. So there's this one. Another brand new Roger Zelazny. This is The Prince of Chaos, another vintage fantasy novel by him. This is an Ava Nova, Ava Nova copy. Uh, another brand new book. This is Arcady by Michael Williams. This is Art Rock Entertainment. And then the last brand new book that I found um, 
I also was tempted to keep this because just look at it. Just, just take it in for a second. So this is Captain Outrageous, Captain's Outrageous. Or for Doom the Bell Tolls by Roy V. Young. I'm guessing this is literally just jokes. So I found this brand new. This is by TSR. Um, TSR does a lot of like nerdy tie-ins. So like World of Warcraft and like Wizards, not Wizards of the Coast. But they, they do a lot of like Dungeons and Dragons types of tie-ins. So that's what TSR does. But these four are all brand new, and they're going to be in the Whatnot Auction. And then these are pre-owned. This is a collaboration with Roger Zelazny and Jane Linsgold. This is Donnerjack. This is, I would almost say this is like new condition. I don't think this has been read, but I'm not 100% sure. It does have a little bit of shelf wear, which is why I wouldn't put this as new. I also have a copy of... A movie copy of the planet of the apes i cannot believe that this movie came out as long as it did it's directed by tim burton which you know tim burton is having a rise thanks to the wednesday this is technically vintage which makes me feel so old so this is from 2001 and this is a first edition movie copy um but yeah there's this if you haven't seen the netflix wednesday it was interesting it was fun. This is uh, another book that is just amazing. <laughs> um, this is Roger Zelazny, A Night of Shadows. And the reason why I say it's amazing, because again, just soak up that cover. It's giving gremlins. It's giving gremlins, but with little dragons. I don't, I don't know. I just, like the late 80s, early 90 covers are just gems. And this is from 1990. I just thought the artwork was amazing. Somebody's definitely going to want that. This is a fantasy book, Master of Five Magics. This is a first edition, I think, by Lyndon Hardy. Let me double check that. Of course, I'm not going to be able to because why would I be able to do it quickly while I am recording? Nope, this is the third printing. So this is from 1981. I have... Into the Labyrinth, a Deathgate novel by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Um, these two ladies have collaborated multiple times for multiple books. So it's got lots of dargons on it. Dragons, I just say dargons. I also have Black Powder War, which seems to have gotten some black powder on it. This is the third book in this series, I believe. Uh, this is by Naomi Novik. I also picked this up, mostly because my mom thought this dude was just super dreamy. Mom, I'm sorry for outing you like that, but I had to watch a lot of this as a kid. <laughs> I liked the show, but I got this because it made me think of my mom. But this is Quantum Leap, the novel. Uh, this is Ryan Gold by Stephen Grundy just a big thick fantasy boy uh, this is Artemis by Andy Weir Andy Weir wrote The Martian which you know is on there which is how I know The Martian had Matt Damon in it in the movie adaptation if you're if you've never heard of it before but there is a movie if you'd rather watch it than read the book but I found a copy of this, this again this is a trade paper this is a mass market cool and the last two books that I am selling on Whatnot is I've got Job, A Comedy of Justice by Robert Heinlein. And then William Shatner's <laughs> Shadow Planet. I mean, the art is actually really nice for that. Uh, if you don't know who William Shatner is, he played Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek series. Yes, I am a giant nerd. Now, that is... All those books that I'm going to be selling on Whatnot, uh, again, link will be down below or in a pinned comment. In addition to all the books that I have just shown you, I also ended up keeping 12 books for myself, but 
that is going to be on my book channel. So if you are not following my book channel or don't know that I have one, that will be linked up above for you guys to go to yourself or and also linked down below as well. So if you want to see what I kept, that'll be in a separate haul over there. And these are the listings I made to make up for those 12 books. So we're still, I'm, I'm keeping track of it and you guys are seeing what I'm selling in place of those from my death pile. Those books are going to be shown on my other channel. So I'm actually at, for my death pile, so I'm at 298 out of a thousand for my death to my death pile. So, I mean, it's helping, but I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, bye!